are the fashion trends that to you hate. I got uh, the inspiration for this video from Tuba Avalon. I will have her video linked below. But basically like she asked on her Instagram, let me know the trends you hate. And I was like, this is an excellent idea. So I went ahead and asked my little broadcast channel on Instagram to submit their most hated trends of the year, okay? I then wrote all of those trends down, did a tally chart and came up with the eight most hated trends and we are going to go through them from least to most hated. <laughs> Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. So head on there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> Never. Let's kick it off with super mini skirts. And this is something that I can get behind. I'm tired of these too. Who do we blame? Who is to blame? Who can I write a strongly worded letter to? I think it's really got to be Mew Mew because they they kicked it off with their microist of the microist mini skirt that came out in what 2022 it took off shockingly the influencers were passing around this set like it was nobody's business at the fashion shows and you know i've got to think are people wearing these in real life you know, am I just going to be walking through the aisles of a food shop and turn around and see a micro little mini skirt? Maybe. I'm already worried about like, oh, let's try and have, you know, no VPL happening. This is like, my gosh, let's try to just keep everything contained. There's just, there's, there's a lot of room for error. Uh, it's a dangerous game being played. And I, I mean, I recently did a shopping vlog and it was just like super mini micro skirt after super mini. I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? I can't, I can't get behind it. Like, give me a mini skirt, yes. Like a little bit, just like a little above the knee, go for it. Why not just let me walk with my hands behind, like over my bum for the rest of the day? Because that's what I'll be doing because I will live in fear of a wardrobe malfunction. So that, yeah, I don't know. People are maybe much more strong mentally than I am. <laughs> Trend number two, those godforsaken mischief red boots slash the cartoon trend for what a couple of weeks there it was just red boot after red boot it was weird and i'm not gonna lie to you i would say like in the last month i saw somebody in the yellow croc versions of those out in these streets okay horrifying i will say though since that little like social media stint of two weeks where it was just like red boot after red boot silence which I think says absolutely everything. But we have been seeing this like cartoonification of fashion in different ways. You've got a brand like Loewe that's been doing it, you know, in these sort of like innovative, interesting ways. But I do feel as though mischief and their tomfoolery will continue into 2024. Um, it's not something that I'm necessarily happy about, but that's what they do. They just go around and they troll and they do things like this and they gifted it to people who they knew that would wear it. And here we are, and I believe they sold out. Whom? Whom bought? Who, who is it? Why did you buy these? I do still feel like we're going to still be seeing this. Uh, even if you look at something like the Rick Owens, it's a boot. I don't know what the official name of it is, but essentially you would get the same thing from a hospital if you were to break your ankle. It's, yeah, it looks like a cast. Is that what that is? I don't know what that is. But those like boots that you have when you have a foot injury or surgery, well, you laugh. I saw this down the runway, I was like, nobody's gonna buy that. Kendall Jenner wore it in Aspen. And oddly enough, like, made it look as good as it could be. I was confused. But we're going to be seeing much more of that, especially as we sort of see that integration between fashion and the digital world, which does tend to be that kind of like animated, with all of the games, you know, all the Fortnite and all of that, there's collaborations going on, whatever. Uh, but even, you know, coming out there uh, on January the 4th, you've got Fendi and Pokemon. So unfortunately, I do think that we shall be seeing more, but yeah, I understand the fatigue and especially mischief, dear me. This next trend is one that I didn't kind of expect to see come up so much, but I fully, fully understand it. And this is the denim maxi skirt. Now, take a little walk with me. Denim skirts in general put the fear of God in me because there is so much restriction happening. Like it has to be such a specific cut for it to feel in any way comfortable. Otherwise that is a prison on the legs. And for it to be a maxi, oh my gosh. 
even more claustrophobia around the legs and even and then usually they've got like a slit up the front and then that just like flapping around in the wind especially because the the denim has a bit of weight to it so it's like the, the added restriction then you're sort of flapping along my chins as we walk i don't know and here's the like you'll see somebody like elsa hosk wear it oh gosh that was a terrible example because she could literally be in anything and she would look like a goddess that's just the way she sod in looks um but yeah you'll see it on hell and you'll be like oh that's a lovely trend that oh yeah that looks great and then you put it on in the mirror and you're like this is just awful um because whilst i think it looks nice and look i can get behind you know taking a little bit of a hit in comfortability to serve a look but like not like that not for not for a piece of clothing that you're meant to be out the full day in the next one is one that oh my gosh i've spoken about it so many times in the past but at any opportunity i will speak about it again crocs crocs need to die crocs are only there should be an enforced rule that is you are allowed to wear i think crocs are acceptable on children below a certain age if it is required by your job or if it makes sense for your job for gardening or like you just need to get the shopping out of the boot of your car and you're just going to put on whatever's in front of you great if you are consciously making the choice of like i'm gonna get dressed today you know i'm, I'm gonna go a bit out and about and you've decided to top it off with crocs I can't, I can't get behind that. It's just this, ju it, know which way you cut it, again, except for the, for the situations that I outlined. Do they look, they don't, they don't look good. They don't. I think on kids, there's like a line where it's like, okay, it's cute, okay? Like anything sort of like chunky and bulbous on a child is just like, oh, I love anything with ears. If I see a child and it's got a hat and it's got ears, brilliant. That's the time to add ears. Would I wear ears as an adult? It's a gray area, but no, generally no, generally no. And I feel the same way about Crocs. It's like jelly shoes, jelly shoes on a child, wonderful. Oh my gosh, adorable. You know, flip flopping along, wonderful. Jelly shoes on an adult, absolutely unacceptable. And that's how I feel about Crocs. I don't think they're any better when you put the widgets and the wadgets and the jiz and the giblets or whatever they're called in the front. That's even weirder. Honestly, I think that's worse. There we go. I've ranted about it enough. The next one, you hate ballet flats. And I'm so sorry to tell you that we're going to be seeing much more of them. As in, if you, see, if you think we've seen a lot of ballet flats now, there's going to be a lot more next year, okay? Again, I sort of get it. I'm like, I can see a good ballet flat when I see one. And when I see an outfit, I'm like, yeah, that looks cute with a ballet flat, good for you. I also understand its hatred, mainly from a, once again, a comfortable point um, and a lack of support because a lot of those are very flat to the ground, okay? There is not much between you and the pavement. Something like a Chanel ballet flat, you know, you've got like a tiny bit of a of a heel there if that's what it can be called and while we're at it uh, ballet core itself was something that that came up a lot as a trend that people have had enough of and ballet core i mean i'm just sick of the bows i'm seeing bows on everything i saw somebody on my instagram that had a um a dinner party and there were just bows on everything like bows on the candles it was just absolutely just like littered with bows and i was like why for, where has this it's becoming too much honestly i'm sick of the bows and i never thought that you, you you know just like an unassuming little tie of ribbon why is it really you know just like soured me why is that like dug into me a little bit i don't know but i've had enough you know it's the bowification of everything not everything needs a bow not everything is a present and should be celebrated as such so yeah it was a bit of a I understand. We are now coming into the top three of the most hated trends. And in number three, we have the no pants trend. Oh my God. This to me is like in a similar realm as the super mini micro skirt. That our trousers and skirts are looking at us from their wardrobes and they are just forlorn and disappointed and upset with the fact that we just keep neglecting them. It seems this year, it's just like bodysuit and tights and just 
hoping for the best, truly. And look, I do think there are certain situations in which I can get behind it. So for example, I recently tried on that amazing wardrobe NYC coat, right? Imagine that with a lace bodysuit and lace tights underneath. You just would never take the coat off, right? There's the, there's the little rule there, the little sort of caveat. Never take the coat off, just commit to it as a dress. And I think that would just look so great, right? With that like sort of continuation of this catsuit underneath, love that. But listen, I'm not going to lie to you. I almost fell victim to the no pants trend. I wore this outfit that I thought in my head, I was like, oh yeah, like this is gonna kill it. I looked at myself in the mirror and I had to have like a long introspective, we had to sort of like unpack trauma, really get to the root of, why did you think that this was a good idea? No, absolutely an unacceptable behaviour, Cassie. And you know, since then, you know, life choices have been reevaluated. It just looks unfinished. It looks, it's very much one of those like flash in the pan trends. Actually, no, I was going to say it's one that, you know, we'll see, we'll see it on celebrities, blah, blah, blah. And maybe you won't really see it in real life, but I did go to an event and I did see somebody wearing that and it was just bodysuit and tights and a blazer. Fair enough. This next trend has been bumped off the top spot, but I'm so proud of us because you know how I feel about this, quiet luxury. Quiet luxury as a term, as a trend, has just been at every corner. If, if we take 2023 as a maze, around every corner, quiet luxury, quiet luxury jumping out and scaring us. And I feel as though Succession really like ignited this fire that was then fanned by Sophia Ritchie's style rebrand and wedding that just cannot be contained. And I mean, we're still riding it out, but the thing with quiet luxury is that it sort of has two main interpretations. And I think depending on which interpretation, it can be either a good or a bad thing. The good side of quiet luxury is the sort of like taking it and using it as an opportunity, especially with, you know, not the best economic situation, which is buying less that is high quality, maybe buying more timeless pieces, less trendy pieces, blah, blah. That bit I understand. I'm like, yeah, I understand dipping and diving and dipping your toe into quiet luxury for that reason. Then you've got the reason of quiet luxury being a thing because of what people think it represents, which is the old money aesthetic, the generational wealth. It's the, my engagement ring was passed down through my grandmama and my grandmama's grandmama and my grandmama of the grandmama's grandmama. So, you know, it's that kind of thing. And it's when people sort of, if that's your vibe, like if that is your style true and true, and you've been like on the quiet luxury before quiet luxury was quiet luxury, then good for you because that's your style. It it's when people sort of try to emulate this because of what they think it represents that it's like, that's when it's a bit like, just do you, you know? And, and, and so then it's like, oh, is it a bit, it's a bit sad if you're dressing like that because you want to be perceived as old money. What's wrong with new money? <laughs> we should just all be just having a bit of fun again. You know, with the outside of the, of, of the prison that is quite luxury, unless that is your style, in which case, you know, whatever is you, just do you. And the most hated trend. That was terrible. Y2K slash low rise. Oh my gosh. I think I said the words Y2K and like early 2000s far too much this year. But I think a lot of people disliked this trend because it was like, oh my gosh, don't make me relive this time in my life where, and obviously our interpretation of Y2K now is like the, the sort of like slightly more palatable bits of Y2K. Because back, you know, we were layering vests on skirts, on trousers, and there was a very thin scarf wrapped around the neck and a lot of things didn't make sense. This, uh, oddly enough, that, that part of Y2K is, has been left behind. But yes, I think some people, and this is gonna happen with all trends, right? People are like, oh gosh, don't let me relive this time. So I understand that. And whilst I've been excited about the elements of Y2K that I was fascinated with as, you know, like a, a child or a teenager and now can indulge in and stuff like that. So I've enjoyed that aspect of it. I will say that with Y2K comes one thing 
and that is low rise especially with a trouser mm, a flowy trouser like i can like i can understand okay i can understand is it still the greatest no but with a jean it's like wow now you're making me commit to a certain level of discomfort all day. Just forget, just take away any chairs because God forbid I sit down. That's gonna, there's gonna be like a whole sort of negotiation with the fabric as you sort of wiggle it down. Either that or your whale tail is gonna be out for the kid behind you to see. You know, it's just, there's a lot to think about. You know, I'm very much so a mid-rise at the very least. And even then, like I, I'm doing mid-rise on certain days when I know I can stomach a mid-rise. Other times I'm like, absolutely not. My emotions are all over the place. The last thing I need is a mid-rise to annoy me, right? So even then, that's not even a low-rise. Oh my gosh. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's never been great really has it anyway there you go let me know if there are any other trends that you would have added to this list uh, I, had, I had a lot of fun doing this one i'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it have an amazing morning afternoon or e evening wherever you are and in the words of my father if you've enjoyed it tell your friends if you haven't keep your mouth shut i'll see you in my next one bye guys